What's up, everybody? Yeah, welcome to the Mike Dolce Show. Sorry for that as I was drinking the Dolce away, getting these amino acids coursing through my veins so I can bring you the most valuable health and fitness content on YouTube. That's true. Not open to debate. And I ask you to subscribe to this channel and give us a thumbs up so we can take our place at the very top of the YouTube fitness community. There is no better content than we give you right here. There is no greater level of experience than we have inside this brand. And I share this information with you. So feel free to ask me any questions right now into the live chat, and I will answer those questions as we continue on. I did want to bring you some very interesting information on the show today. We're going to talk about what I recently said on Instagram and the reaction as I gave my opinion on carnivore for athletes or the carnivore diet for athletes. And we're going to read some of the com comments and I'm going to break those down for you. We want to thank our sponsor, Cassandrinos Extra Virgin Olive Oil. Go to Cassandrinos.com slash Dolce. So you can learn more. You can even try a free bottle of Cassandrino's Extra Virgin Olive Oil, or you can get a 25% discount with promo code Dolce. That link is below this video. I highly recommend you learn more, at least, about Cassandrino's Extra Virgin Olive Oil. Now, as you're leaving your questions in the chat, asking me these fitness and fat loss questions, I want to share my thoughts on what happened earlier today on Instagram. Let's see if you can hear this video. What? What? All right, so... If you did not hear that, the audio through this, this platform is usually awesome, sometimes not. I said the carnivore lifestyle, especially for athletes, is bullshit rock. We all know an omnivorous meal plan is the most ideal for athletes and longevity, full stop. So what does that mean? Let me explain this to you. What I said was, and I answered this, there was a question that came through, through the live Q&A on our Instagram page. So you should follow the Instagram page. Also, they said, what are my, what is my opinion on a carnivore diet for athletes? And I said, well, a carnivore diet is BS. It is BS. It is BS. In nearly every way that I've ever heard it described outside of maybe Sean Baker, maybe Sean Baker might be the only person I respect in the carnivore world, as I believe he's the only one who's speaking honestly. At the very least, I believe Sean is the only one in the carnivore community that is speaking honestly and just telling his version of the truth. Every other name that I know, and maybe I don't know them all, Every other name that I know is simply trying to sell you a false bill of goods. What do I mean by that? Well, as I go on to say, I say that the carnivore diet is, is BS, especially for athletes, when we know definitively that an omnivorous meal plan is the most ideal. We all know an omnivorous, that's not the way you spell it, is most ideal for athletes and longevity. So what does this mean? What is a carnivore diet? Very briefly, let me clean this up for you because I want to get to your questions. A carnivore diet is only eating meat, period, at the end. It's a carnivore. You're a carnivore. You only eat meat. No plants at all. No nothing at all. If it did not come from an animal's carcass, you are not a carnivore. Carnivores only eat that which comes from animals. That's it. That is a carnivore. A carnivore does not also eat honey or bananas or avocado. That is not a carnivore. You know what that's called? That is called an omnivore. An omnivore eats animal products and plant products. A vegan 
on the other side of the spectrum eats only plants. A carnivore that eats bananas and avocados is a vegan that also eats steak and salmon. Do you hear how ridiculous this is? Do you hear how ridiculous this is? So all of those talking about a carnivore diet that also includes honey and avocado and banana, they are lying to you. They are conflating the facts, conflating the signs. They're trying to differentiate their little tiny piece of that market segment so they can sell you something instead of simply telling you the truth. I'm not mad at anybody selling anything and making money to put their kids through school or what have you. That's fine. I get angry when I see the conflation of facts for simple material gain with the little side of ego and narcissism. That bothers me. So, carnivore diet is not great for athletes. And there are, what are some of the... Um, this is a good one. GSP says if he was to fight again, he would do an animal-based because he feels best on it. I know animal-based isn't exactly carnivore, but very close. No, it's not very close. Number one, it's not very close. An animal-based with plants. What is that called? Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't showing that to you. What is that called? It's called an omni omnivore. You're not a carnivore with plants. You're an omnivore then. You're no longer a carnivore. You're an omnivore. That's the fact. That's the fact. But GSP had made some statements because he's in a business relationship with one of the other carnivore marketers out there saying, oh, if... If I knew about this diet back when I was competing, then I would do this diet completely. Therefore, you should buy these supplements. Also, that I'm selling through this carnivore company. That's not exactly genuine. Because the carnivore diet is nothing new. George has had access to all the great science and, and scientists and practitioners his whole career. George would not be following a, a plant-based, animal-based, carnivore-based diet. George would be doing basically what brought him more world titles than any other welterweight in history, right? That he, wouldn't, he would actually have a drop-off in performance and inability to recover if he was training like he was training to be inside the UFC. We know that because I've seen other athletes try the carnivore diet or hybrids of the carnivore diet at a much lower level that George St. Pierre was. A much lower training volume and training intensity and training duration and training consistency that George was and has been and i will tell you definitively that not one of them was able to stick to that type of meal plan period the end i'm happy to talk about this with anybody that wants to have the conversation kaiser says hey do uh, now let me let me jump in so i just wanted to put that out there about that i thought it was notable jump over to our instagram page and take a look it's certainly fun to read through the comments there's a lot of comments going on and there are blue checks todd duffy Todd Duffy, former UFC heavyweight phenom on the cover of Muscle and Fitness Ag magazine, like the next great UFC heavyweight was Todd Duffy before he had some injuries and setbacks. But he was Hercules, it, it, like the modern Hercules. Todd Duffy gets on there and just destroys, destroys the concept that that style of diet is anywhere near effective for a combat athlete, a mixed martial artist, or really any athlete. So this is coming from an athlete also who gives his opinion on it inside the comments. Worth a read. Jesse Lee, three weeks out from a pro kick, kickboxing debut, doing MMA fight-specific circuits um, at five-minute rounds. If I plan to take MMA fights, three weeks out from pro kickboxing. So I, I would only focus on pro kickboxing right now. Don't worry about cross-training for MMA while you're training for a kickboxing fight. You're doing MMA specific circuits, um, five minute rounds. Yeah, I would train. So it, it's, I think the words are a little jumbled here. Maybe there was uh, some, some, you know, input 
issues. Um, but what I'm, I'm hearing is that you're three weeks out from a pro kickboxing debut and you are currently training or asking if you should train more like a MMA fighter with five round circuits. I say, no, you train kickboxing as a kickboxer. If you're competing, you're inside the peaking phase, but even the training camp phase, every other sport falls away unless it's generalized cross training to support the kickboxing goal. So I would just do the kickboxing uh, within a, a pretty close. If you're doing three minute rounds, maybe I would do three and a half minute rounds or, you know, I, maybe not even four minute rounds because um, kickboxing is different. It's go. It's a sprint. It's a three minute sprint. It should be a three minute sprint. MMA, it, it's a little too long to just go straight sprint. Sean, is it bad to have sweet fruit and acidic fruit together? like a banana and an orange, since it's said to cause digestive issues. Well, your, an your question is the answer. My answer would be, how does it make you feel? Like if you say, man, I eat half a banana and like two slices of orange before my workout and bro, I feel awesome. I just get this nice little jolt of energy. It's not heavy. It digests super clean. It's man, it's great. But I read this article that said I should never pair the two because it's bad for me. <laughs> That happens all the time. No, it sounds awesome. But if you're like, man, I had like a little taste of a banana and I smelled some orange juice and I immediately felt sick. Well, that's your body talking to you. Don't do that. That's the simple and easy answer, right? I, I had a great doctor friend say many, many, many years ago to me and it's stuck and it holds in almost every conversation. Treat the patient, not the paper, right? So whether or not your levels are slightly higher or slightly lower, how do you feel? How do you perform? That's the answer with most foods. Who knows? Hey, Dolce, regarding green tea combination, which green tea do you recommend to use as for fat loss? I started drinking Sencha green tea since your fat loss stack video. Awesome. Glad to hear. Doesn't matter. Any high level, high quality green tea will work. We'll have the, the polyphenol component that we're looking for. I love higher quality everything, right? We want the highest quality everything, highest quality food and the highest quality braking system inside the vehicle that takes our children around town, right? We want the highest quality in everything. It always makes sense. But with green tea, there's not really a, a downside to the more conventional um, Costco brand, let's say. Kaiser, Dolce, any tips to speed up a slow metabolism? Start moving your body more. The best tip I can give all of my metabolically challenged friends is I think that's the PC term I have to call you now. You're metabol metabolically challenged. I'm just making that up. By the way, kind of sounds good, though. I think it'll stick. Activity. You want to speed up your metabolism. You got to start moving your body more. Many people, and I've had this conversation many times, many people come to me, they want to speed up their metabolism, but they're, all, they're leading a very sedentary lifestyle. They want to speed up their metabolism while being sedentary so they were, are no longer suffering the effects of a sedentary lifestyle. I say, well, that's not possible. If you want to speed up your metabolism, you must get up to speed and you are currently stopped. Right. So you want to go from stopped to an idle to like a slow little roll and then we can pick up speed. That's how more activity, more activity, neat, non-exercise associated thermogenesis. I'm talking, I'm moving my hands, I'm moving my head, moving my body. I'm burning more calories right now than if I just sat here like this. Right. Over five minutes, 50 minutes, five hours and 50 minutes. Talking like this and getting up and walking and pacing back and forth burns a ton more. Guess what? Much higher metabolic output simply as a result of more activity. How you want to increase your metabolism? I just told you. I'm showing you right now as I'm easily talking to you. And this mindset can, can infect every other aspect of your life. So you, will become, you are becoming meta metabolically enhanced in what you do. Of course, we can talk about diet and sleep and stress management. That matters. But this is a, a short little show. How do you prepare your green tea in tea bags? 70 degrees Celsius. I don't really, I just bring the water to a boil and then I leave it off the boil for a minute or two. And then I pour it, you know, into the tea and I move on. Or we have the little uh, um, heating 
heated hot cold water machine we use that too that's fine makes great i let the bag seep for a while i'm one of those that leaves the the tea bag in the water pretty much for the whole cup what up spider good to see you man for tea for a jits tournament should i train more endurance strength or explosiveness all of the above because you need great endurance you need great strength you need great explosiveness you must Train them all so you have them all. I would say getting ready. So if you're you're peaking, once again, this is a little, hopefully we can give a mini masterclass on peaking. The way you train is dictated by how close you are to the expression of your training. A jiu-jitsu tournament is simply an expression of your skill set to date. That's all it is. It's like you're taking a test. How far have I advanced? Where are my holes? Where are my weaknesses? Where are my flaws? Where are my strengths? So in your training, the off-season training, we can get a little bit more complicated and we can train different phases, if you will. There's different ways to train your strength and your weaknesses to target weaknesses, hopefully in particular. And many people avoid their weaknesses and they focus on their strengths because that glorifies their ego, but it doesn't really help them when they get to the test at the end. So 4T to answer, you must train them all. I would put a little more specificity into the area that I can bring up the fastest I might not be good at, but I wouldn't spend an inordinate amount of time on an area I suck at and neglect my powerful area. What does that mean? That means if you are a, a four-time NCAA Division I national champion wrestler that has never boxed in his whole life and he's about to get into his first um, MMA competition, I wouldn't say spend your entire camp throwing jab, cross, hook, hook uppercut, step off, body, uppercut. No. I'd say keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Let's get inside, close the distance, and, and take it to where you need to be. So the wrestler's weakness is footwork and body movement with proper hand position, knowing range, gauging distance and timing, and having the footwork appropriate to be able to then throw strikes in a timely manner in a coordinated fashion while, without falling out of position. That's a lot of work especially when it's new. So again, I'm going a little long here, but for context, as it can be spread wide, what should you train? And I get these type of questions a lot. What do you train? Endurance, strength, explosiveness, all of it. You must have all of it. Is Greek yogurt a good late night snack? Yes, it is. Sometimes, not all the time, not every night for sure. You'll get mud gut, but once every so often, I like to... For me, it's like six ounces of a whole fat organic Greek yogurt with like eh, know, a cup of blueberries, a tablespoon or two of chia seeds, maybe a little uh, raw honey drizzled on top. I'm, I'm in. Um, Hua says, I'm a member of the Facebook Dolce group. My professional boxing debut is held at 8 p.m. July 16th, next Saturday um, at 141 pounds. Is it kept pace 10 pounds until fight day? Is it kept pace 10 pounds left? Okay, I, I don't know. Is it kept pace? A little typo there. It looks like, but you have 10 pounds to lose over the next week. Um, that sounds doable. Assuming you're fully fed, fully hydrated, not cutting at all, you're 10 pounds over. I think, yeah, I think it's pretty easy to start scaling down. Um, your body weight, manipulating those electrolytes, ridding yourself of the unwanted water and inflammation. That's probably good for six pounds right there without even starting to cut, just kind of cleaning things up a little bit. Um, I would say, I would suggest right now for you, Hua, start getting in the bathtub, the bathtub in your house at night, every night for about a half hour or so and have a very calm, peaceful, relaxing, purifying environment. Lights off so you don't have that external stimuli, low light candles, low music, relaxation, watching a TV show that you enjoy. The point is for Hua and everyone listening right now, you want to take these very calm baths about a week or so out, training your body to more efficiently 
relieve itself of this stored water weight, which you're going to have to lose. So your actual walk around weight will be slightly lighter. It's great for ladies who are approaching that time um, in their cycle for guys are holding a little bit of extra water or for athletes preparing to peak for some form of competition. It's a great way to prepare. Sean, do you have any um, vacancies? I could type captions for your videos. Since auto-generated captions are not always right, I could add timestamps just doing this so I can afford an MMA gym. Sean, shoot me a DM inside. No, that's uh, send an email to Gabby, G-A-B-B-Y. That'll be easier. Gabby at bdolcediet.com. I, I, tell us a little bit more. What are your thoughts? What are your skill sets? Sean, I'd love to hear it. I appreciate you reaching out. And that's for anybody out there. If you have a skill set, something to add, you think it could be of, of help, shoot us an email. Let's know. Let's hear about it. Almost every person who currently works with and around and for us has been in the community that reached out with a special skill. We're always looking for great hands on deck or even just network for down the road. Let me know what you do. So send Gabby an email, Gabby, G-A-B-B-Y at thedolcediet.com. John, will I get loose skin? I'm cutting from 220 to 180. Heaviest weight was 250. I'm 5'10". I was 5'10", 282. You were only 250. So and I, I went down much farther than you. Now, the skin will be loose until it's not. Right. So it takes more time for the skin to reclaim elasticity as it does to lose the fat cell underneath the skin. So as long as you keep that in mind, you should be fine. Um, for T, you got it. DC. OK, Mike, I love your advice. Sleep, diet, etc. Never see you being realistic to social workers, firefighters when you're saying in a bed nine hours before sleep. I finish. <laughs> Um, at 7.30 in the morning. This is great. Impossible for me to get more than four to five hours of sleep. Four or five hours sleep cycles. Any advice to optimize this? Yes. Now, let me, let me go a little bit long on this so I can understand. All the time I get the shift workers yelling at me, telling me I'm wrong, I'm unrealistic because they work 12, 16, 24-hour shifts with no break because they work the overnight shift from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. the next day because they work two jobs or have a thousand kids and their schedule is atypical. So they tell me I'm wrong when I tell them they as human beings need to sleep seven and a half to nine hours per night. I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. Your sleep schedule's wrong. Your lifestyle's wrong. Now, I understand you go through a phase in life where this is your schedule. It hadn't been at one point in your life, and it won't be at another point in your life. My strong suggestion for you is to try and change your life style, choices, external influences, to optimize your ability to be a healthier version of yourself that can live longer without the chronic ailments that are common amongst all of those who adopt your current lifestyle schedule. Now, knowing you have to be a firefighter for a short period of time well, we do our best. That's where stress management becomes even more important. That's where nutrition becomes even more important. That's where intelligent, consistent exercise becomes even more important. That's when not drinking alcohol and not eating fried foods and not consuming processed sugar becomes even more important. But most of the people who complain to me that I'm unrealistic by saying you must sleep seven and a half to nine hours per night to be optimally recovered, repaired, rejuvenated. They tell me I'm wrong for saying that, but they also drink alcohol, overeat on highly processed foods, don't go to bed even earlier than they than they do when they certainly can because they sit up watching stupid TV shows and stupid sporting events 
that they could DVR and watch on their day off. So they, they yell at me because saying, hey, uh, you know, biologically speaking, the human organism needs seven and a half to nine hours to fully go through all the necessary job cycles that, that they need to go through, that the cells need to go through in order to be fully repaired, rejuvenated and ready. They don't want to hear that. While and DS, DC, this might not be you, but I'm sure it does does kind of, you know tap on the shoulder one of these areas that you're not doing everything optimally knowing you're doing one thing horribly. And I understand, man, you know, you got to pay for the kids. It gives health care. There's a, there's a, your, your 403B or your, your deferred comp pack or whatever it is. I get it, but it's not optimal. And you're making a trade, an intelligent trade. You're trading, you're deciding to trade. But what are you giving up? What is the collateral damage? And that's what I always push back. Now, I know that you can get more sleep, more deep, restful, complete sleep. I know that you can, but I'm going to push you to figure it out and cut out some of your other recreational activities. 4T, the next DDC is looking like early August. We, we were saying we we're pushing it towards the end of July, but I have quite a bit of travel coming up in July and I didn't want to stack things so closely. It is summertime after all, and I, I want just everything to be easy and enjoyable and efficient, mostly. The team's running around, everybody's running around a little bit. So we were pushing hard for the end of July, but it'll be an easier event for everybody if we just do early August. I think it was... I just actually had this conversation. The 12th. I think we're looking at the 12th, 13th, and 14th right now. So you can send Gabby. Some of you had sent Gabby an email to be on the, the pre-registration list for our next Dolce Diet Certification and Fitness Conference. It will be amazing. Um, just Gabby, G-A-B-B-Y at the Dolce Diet.com. Um, John Paul lost 30 pounds with our advice. I'm so happy to hear that. Any advice on or any tips to avoid facial bloating? Yeah, well, bloating is usually a byproduct of some sort of dysfunction. There's something going on that's setting off an artificial inflammatory response. What is that? So there are tips. One great tip to avoid bloating is to simply drink more water. Water in tends to flush the held water out without getting too crazy. We're not trying to achieve sodium depletion here. We're maximizing our, our micronutrient intake, including our electrolytes, of course, but we're increasing water intake. We're avoiding processed foods, highly palatable processed foods, synthetic toxic food-like substances, fried foods, Processed sugar, we're avoiding all that because they're all known to be inflammatory by nature. That inflammation starts in the gut, the digestive system, the microbiome, as you hear the term. Those synthetic foods cause an inflammatory response in your gut that becomes systemic through other cells and systems of your body, usually ending up in your face, right? Right? So someone drinks a bunch of alcohol, what happens? Face gets puffy. Someone takes a prescription drug, what happens? Face gets puffy. Someone eats a, a pizza or, or food that they're not used to eating in a while, what happens? Face gets puffy. Someone stays up a little too late. They wake up in the next morning, what happens? Face gets puffy. This inflammation is a result of some sort of, sort of dysfunction in your life. The goal here, what I'm trying to push you guys toward is, is look for balance and homeostasis. It's so easy. It's so easy. That the bicep of truth has to remind you. Uh, DC says, uh, I, I, but if someone is de dedicated to the career which requires shift work, what's your advice? Um, oh, I, I think my advice is to do everything else 100% because you have no room to slide there. To do everything else 100%. There's, there's no more beer. There's no alcohol in your life. There's no candy. There's no sweets in your life. There's no staying up later than the absolute maximum. You must stay awake every single day because you're already in the negative. There are already holes in the boat. And I say this to not candy coat it. I say it to be clear. 
And I want you to be aggressive in doing everything else perfectly. Perfectly. You got to be going to your doctor and getting your blood work checked. Absolutely. You especially. If not, I would run there right now. I would click the link below to MerrickHealth.com slash Dolce. And I would get the full mail panel I've built out because I would want to know every single one of those values. If I'm only sleeping four or five hours a night. That is that is set up for, for not great stuff in the future. Um, thanks for all your tips. I really appreciate it. What do you think about pyramid training? Like I start with 80% of my weight doing six reps, then drop weight to less or more reps. Good for muscle. Yeah, you can pyramid up for three to six weeks and pyramid down for three to six weeks. That's a fun one. Fun little six to 12 week summertime training cycle, right? Pyramid up, pyramid down. As long as you're pushing hard, you're keeping your form quality and your last, you know, two sets, you're, you're performing maybe two to six sets per workout that are at or near total failure, technical failure, we call it, which hedges on the side of safety. As long as you're pushing your body, whether it's, it's lower weights, higher reps or or uh, lower weight, higher reps or whatever the, the, the thing is. You're going to be stimulating muscle fiber activation and growth, but you really have to be into the, the, the upper range in order to get it. Otherwise, you're maintaining it. Hey, that's fine, too. Uh, Dolce, what ways do you consume your cannabis? What are your are you high all day or disciplined uh, with it? Great question. Are you a cop? By the way, it's a good thing New Jersey is now a recreational legal state, as was Nevada, where we lived in Las Vegas prior to New Jersey. My preferred ways of cannabis ingestion for the average person is not the inhalation of the smoke. Now, I, I am an advocate of the medical benefits of THC and the possible benefits of CBD. Like I'm, I'm open to that and supportive of that. But the, the route of ingestion, that is problematic, where it would oftentimes be better not to consume THC or CBD if you were smoking it because the inhalation of the carcinogenic materials, in my opinion, is more negative than the positive impact of THC. But if you can eat it, if you put it in an oil or if uh, possibly vapor, which is trapping the THC molecule into a, a water molecule, then the inhalation of the vapor itself. But even then, most vaporizers have damage. So there, there's other you know materials out there that are a little less common, more complex. That All right, so vapor matters. Um, and then also there's the traditional edibles, as you see. Um, so I would say edibles would be the way to go because of the inhalation of the carcinogenic material. What do you mean mud gut coach, big Greek yogurt fan over here? Well, you'll feel it most of the time. Now people have a very hard time digesting dairy. Why is it dairy? It's dairy, not because it's dairy. It's dairy because of the lactose. It's dairy because of the triple bound sugar, which is not common in almost any other food group or food product. That's why dairy is so challenging for so many people. It is the triple bound sugar molecule in dairy. That causes the, the serious digestive discomfort. Most of us, myself included, I come from um, you know Italian Sicilian descent. My people also hear Native American, so I'm, I'm Sicilian and Native American of my background. I think I have a, a little bit of Scottish dribbled in there on my grandmother's side. But I always say because I had, I'm assuming because through my father's side, I have that that gene pool of dairy eaters in that part of the world. My digestive enzymes have been pre-selected and developed that dairy doesn't really bother me that much as an adult. Most children, it doesn't bother most, not all, most until they hit puberty. Then after puberty, children, you know, evolutionary speaking, had needed dairy products through childhood to grow. So they, they had, generally speaking, more enzymes to break down the triple bound sugar inherent in dairy. When they go through puberty, they don't rely on milk anymore. And those enzymes tend to go away. And all of us, that does. Many people 
have mild lactose intolerance to severe lactose intolerance as they age. And it typically gets worse with age. Now, to answer your question, the more exposure you have to dairy, the more your enzymes are beaten up. Now, if you have a few ounces of dairy once a day, once every other day, you have enough enzymes to deal with that. And the collateral damage of that little mini skirmish isn't so bad. But if you eat dairy a couple times per day, all day, every day, that becomes a bigger issue that most people have in dealing with. That's why I say it becomes mud gut. You just feel like your guts are just all globby and going all slow. I mean, not a scientific term here, but that is the most common output. You will like realize like, man, my stomach, I just kind of feel like I'm not hungry. I'm not full. I just kind of feel like a little like, like muddy, like the mud floating through my gut right now. Usually it's because you've been eating a little too much dairy. I mean, a lot of other foods too, but also dairy is a big culprit of that. Also legs feeling kind of heavy, heavy on this weight cut. Um, any tips? Well, that there's a thousand billion hundred reasons, you know, or are you doing 5,000 burpees a day, body weight squats a day? Maybe you don't do enough. Are you doing, you know, road running and hill running a million reasons? Um, get good sleep, get good recovery. I should say that just message Gabby. Thanks a lot. You got it. And it is Ben Greenfield legit. Oh, I think not since he follows intermittent fasting. I've seen Ben do a thousand different things over the years. And he's always got a product to sell behind it. I don't know Ben personally. We might get along very well, but I really haven't seen Ben say anything that is not attached to a new product he's selling. And it's usually divergent from the principles and principles and products he was pushing six to 36 months prior. What does that mean? I, I don't know. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I really haven't seen a lot of um, um, consistency other than marketing over there. So it's hard to take any of it seriously. Get back to being healthy. I'm on no restrictions and my labs are always messed up. Chuck, you want to get back to being healthy? You're on no restrictions, but your labs are always messed up. Well, that's not good. Messed up labs could be something super serious. So I hope you're working with a medical team. If you're not working with a medical team, I suggest, strongly suggest you click the link below tumerichealth.com slash Dolce, a sponsor of this show, but the exact medical team I send my elite athletes to, to work with Merrick to do a comprehensive blood panel. I have two blood panels on my landing page at merrickhealth.com slash Dolce. These are the tests I believe you must get done to take back control of your health. Every one of those matters without too many. Merrick allows you to do this at a very inexpensive and high quality means. And I'm very happy to be working with them. But Chuck, I would say, check that out, man. Get on top of it. Then I'm happy to do, do a consult with you. The, the doctors at Merrick will do a doc, do a consult with you. They'll walk you through, explain everything, prescribe anything. Should you even need it? It's all in-house. It's amazing. They're used to dealing with elite performers, not just keeping people alive like your local general physician. Love them, they're necessary, but that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to optimize, optimize our lives. How many grams of uva and dandelion per day? I think, thank you so much for all the help and guidance. Jesse, you got it. Um, usually we start between about 500 milligrams of uva and of dandelion on average once per day and build that to three times per day and then maybe even triple that um, per day, which would be anywhere between 500 milligrams of each to, per day to 1500 milligrams taken three times each per day, depending on where you are, what you need. But you'll know, we always say start small and scale. See if your body starts losing water. Heck, start drinking some dandelion tea first and see if your body starts dropping some water. Very possible. Ha <laughs> ha, Cosgrove, I'm laughing at you. Uh, you're the man, coach. I appreciate that, D. We're working hard over here. Who knows? Just curious. Do you ever have cheat days where you drink beer like vacation or weddings? I had my bachelor party and drank a lot and got a small belly, but back on my routine as soon as I got home. Yes. Have I drank beer in my life? Absolutely. I love an ice cold beer sitting by the docks with a plate of seafood in front of me on a beautiful sunny day with the boats driving by and the laughter of my kids in the air. I love that. I love that. Awesome. Sitting on the back of the deck with a cold beer and just like the family running around and everybody's having fun. 
Love that. How often do I do that? I haven't done it yet this summer. Summer's half over. Right? I haven't earned it yet. I got goals, baby. I set goals for myself. I set clear goals for myself. I have not achieved those goals yet. Therefore, I have not earned that yet. Most people, this is the problem. Most people cheat before they even get started. Most people cheat themselves out of victories. They cheat themselves out of a win. You've heard the saying, cheaters never win, right? There is no more truer saying when it comes to targeted fat loss or physical transformation than cheaters never win. Some will say, oh, it's unsustainable to not poison yourself. No, that is just very weak thinking. Very weak thinking perpetuated by weak minds. When you have a goal, you set a plan, you follow the plan until you attain the goal. That is it. To say anything other is wrong, and you may try and justify it with your weakness. That's on you. Keep that mess over there on your side of the lawn. Because over here, we haven't earned it yet. And until we earn it by accomplishing the tasks at hand, we will not have it because we are mature. We are responsible. We are focused. We are winners. So everyone telling you to eat cookies and drink beer and blow off steam and YOLO while you are on a very specific weight loss, fat loss, muscle gaining, athletic performing body transformation, they are doing you a disservice and you are doing yourself a disservice. Earn it. That is the mentality. That is the concept. That is how it works. Poisoning yourself simply because the name of the week is Sunday has no benefit to you. Has no benefit. It does not, quote, reset your metabolism better than a slight caloric infusion of these same high net nutrient, healthful whole foods you have been eating all week anyway. You don't need to go to Taco Bell because you're, you're at a weight loss plateau. You can still use high net nutrient, healthful whole foods, high quality foods, devoid of synthetic toxic chemicals and stick to the plan and have much greater results and mentally be a stronger version of yourself. And that's the one thing. So Wednesday night was the first meeting of our inner circle VIP group. During that period of time, we discussed all of this success. It's a success driven group, personal success in fitness, success at home, developing your family unit, success in finance, becoming independently, financially independent, becoming wealthy. And then your fortress, which is your network, your leg legacy. In speaking about this, it all starts with the mentality. Being an honest individual starts with your mentality. Being dependable starts with your mentality. None of this is physical. It's all mental. So when I hear people talk about their cheat days and you have to cheat, I know that they are mentally weak. I know I have already beat them. It's the perspective that they have that keeps them weak. And unfortunately, there are all too many of those and all too few of these. So my strong suggestion to you, if you never get any other piece of advice from me, simply take this one everything you do in your life whether good 
or bad is 100% your responsibility. 100% you're making. So when you consider your cheat days and hitting the alarm clock and not pushing for that last repetition, just know you took the weak route. You sold out. You mentally quit. And I just took one step further past you. So in those moments, you think about me. On Sunday, when you're cheating and I'm working, don't come to me on Monday and tell me how lucky I am or ask me how you can, you already know. That's the secret to this. There is no cheat day. There is no cheat day. You either earned it or you didn't. And I will tell you right now, you did not earn it. Most people say, well, how do I know if I earned it? You didn't earn it. If you don't know that you earned it, you didn't earn it yet. And sometimes you set a goal, you achieve the goal, and you even know that you didn't earn it. Keep that in mind, my friends. Michael, thoughts on intermittent fasting for the autophagy benefits on top of the weight loss. It is all blown out of proportion. It is never followed to the degree necessary. The benefits of autophagy in the limited circumstances for those who attempt it is far minimized by the negative effects of the disordered eating pattern and relationship with food that comes with many on the intermittent fasting journey when they would be much better served in the short and long term to follow an omnivorous multi-meal feeding program of healthy foods that are culturally available in the soil or the streams in the fields. Not by starving yourself for 16 to 18 hours per day so you can binge on Taco Bell or Chipotle or whatever, which most people do. And don't tell me that they don't because I talk to them every day. Most people fast all day long. Then they are allowed to, quote, cheat, which is effectively what they do. They binge on garbage food until they feel sick, and then they starve themselves. Tell me that is not a disordered lifestyle. It is much better to wake up naturally, drink some water, do a little stretch, go for a walk, meditate, and eat some fresh fruit, maybe an egg, some avocado, a little bit of oats, have an apple, drink some tea, a little bit more water, move your body a little bit more, have a piece of salmon, some sauteed spinach, butternut squash, fresh pineapple, Acai, a little more activity, right? Throughout the day, you got other stuff, work, play, all this stuff going on. A little piece of steak, maybe some salmon, some couscous, quinoa, farro. That's not bad. What's, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Nothing, right? That lifestyle I just said, if you just, if you just did exactly what I just said, and I, I didn't even talk about the next meal. There, you got one more meal to eat, by the way. 
If you simply followed that lifestyle, which one of you in a year from now would not be a sexy fucking beast? Would not be a sexy beast. Holy cow. You would look amazing. Amazing. Put you in a movie, baby. Right? If you just did exactly what I just said, if you just did that, you would by no stretch of the imagination be a superhero. But no, we're going to fast. Because a bunch of people who don't actually do it are telling you to do it for the perceived benefits that they never got because they stopped doing it. They don't do it. They don't do it. Who fasts? Honestly. Who fasts? 24-7, 365. Who of your gurus fast? They all say that they don't fast. Usually, usually, they're not in very good shape. They're certainly not ideal. They're either super skinny or super skinny fat. I've never saw someone talking about intermittent fasting. I was like, damn, I want to look like that dude. That girl is fucking fit. I never saw one of them, not one of them ever. So why are we talking about fasting again? It's good marketing. Could you ever do a video of what Dolce eats and drinks? Yeah, we will eventually. We're going to do a full day of eating. We're going to do more with the channel when we have more time down the road. Uh, that's definitely something we know is there. We think the content will be amazing. It'd be great to just show you how I navigate my day. I'd love for someone to just follow me all day long. The amount of stuff I, I do in a day, it's like I live 20 lives in one single day, every single day. So much stuff happens. So much stuff gets done. So little complaints are ever voiced, right? I, there's so much stuff I get done. How easy it is to eat my meals to stay fit on track on path to be like gloriously fulfilled with my food at the same time crushing the output that three men cannot do if working together i would find them sleeping when i got home from work all sleeping together spooning each other because they couldn't keep up with my schedule and i don't i don't poison myself throughout the day with highly processed, synthetic, hyper-palatable chemicals that everybody will tell you you must eat in order to be normal. The bicep of truth disagrees with that statement. All right, guys and gals, I'm having fun here. If you are interested, I don't know if I showed this to you, bang, go to thedolcediet.com. Wait, check this out. Watch this. If you go here and you click on bang, the inner circle membership, guess what? I'm going to give you a week for free, zero dollars, seven days for free, the inner circle membership. What is the inner circle membership? Well, you can go to this page and find out you will receive broadcast messages from me every single day where we can engage and talk and have community discussion in real time. It is amazing technology. Furthermore, you will have access to our over 200 individual exercises. And I don't see it here. I'm sorry. I'm all of these, these, these workout handbooks, over 200 different workouts and sequences and exercises and the entire living lean recipe book, over 200 recipes free Banana, flaxseed, pit bull pancakes, or cinnamon, apple, grilled cheese. Again, my friends, this is all completely free at thedolcediet.com. The inner circle, I strongly suggest you guys jump and check that out. I don't know how much longer it will be free. You can, of course, always cancel at any time. It is, oh shit, you're not even seeing that, are you? Oh, yeah, you are. Sorry about that. 
Bang. So anyway, sorry. Just got caught up in the page. Um, check out the Inner Circle. It is awesome. It is awesome. I'm super excited about it. We haven't even launched it yet. Nobody even knows about it yet. Um, the email is going to go out on Monday. So you guys are the first to know. Jump in. It's free. You get a week for free. Cancel anytime. There's no obligation, no issues, no worries. We just launched it. I'm super duper excited. All those workouts. Just go through and watch all those freaking workouts that we filmed. Look at all the recipes right there. Plus all the amazing content that will be inside. There's going to be like interviews that I don't have that, that are not posted live. I'm going to have exclusive conversations with like my, my, my super friends, like one minute conversation about a certain topic with, with, you know, some of the, the big A-listers where they might not be able to sit down for 60 minute interviews. Bang. That's going to be in the broadcast section of the inner circle. Um, Thanks, coach. Always motivating. Always the truth. Jose, I appreciate you, man. Thank you, guys. You're awesome. Anyway, I appreciate you guys. And until next time, boom.